his head. Tell us where Dr. Reamer got it wrong. Well, I think she has it reversed. And the reason being is um, now that you've seen where all the pressure would go, if, if the entrance wound is here on the left shoulder, and we're saying that we're at least three to four feet away from there because we have no soot, we have no stippling on the skin, then by the time it gets to the left side of the chin or over here at the, the angle of the mandible, the jaw, we've lost a lot of energy. And so, yes, you can get some pellets still going up into the head, but you're not going to have the top of the head completely blown off. And if you look at the photograph here, you can see, you know, for all of us, it curves over and goes around because the top of our skull is there. If you look here, it goes flat. He's missing the top of his skull. That, that would not have happened from a three to four foot, three or four, I should say three feet or further shotgun wound coming in on the left side. And the wound on his shoulder, let's look at that real quick. Shoulder, please. That's a pretty big wound, is it not? It is, and, and there's pellets that are going down into the tissue. Um, and what is the evidence of that? Well, there's, there's photographs that uh, are taken looking down into the wound, and you can see pellets there, and there are x-rays that are taken that you can see there's pellets down into the left shoulder. Okay, if you go to Defendant's Exhibit 162, Okay, step down here, please. Yes, sir. May I? Your Honor, may you step down? Thank you. You stand over there with the pointer. Show the jury, please, the individual pellets. Oh, well, this is probably the easiest one to see. Um, round and silver. I'm going to have to come around for a moment. I'm sorry. There's one here. There's one here. It's not projecting well, but I know that um, I saw a few down here, but then on x-ray, it'll become more apparent. Okay, well, let me do this. Let's go ahead and put the x-ray up while we're talking about this, which would be... Which one of these you want to start on? We can do this okay. one since we're talking about it. Hold on one second. Any objections? Your Honor, I would offer into evidence um, exhibit, defense exhibit 112 and ask it be put under seal. No objection. <coughs> I submit it. All right. Um, tell us what uh, exhibit you got. Do you have that? 112? 112. Shocking, Your Honor. We have some technical issues here. This is, I don't know what happened to big poster boards. I just. Got it? No? Yes? No, this is 112. I mean, it's going to take some time. Let's just put it on the elbow and go from there. We're interested in this area. And I'm going to have one more. OK, 
Okay, tell the jury, please, what we're looking at here. Sure. So any case that comes to a medical examiner's office that has any type of penetrating injury, um, the medical examiner will do x-rays uh, to see if there's anything left in the body and then also for safety reasons. But what we're looking at here is um, this is the, the spine. These are the ribs. So we're looking at the chest, the left shoulder, because we're coming out here to the left arm, and all of these dots are the pellets um, from the shotgun wound. And what we can see here is that these pellets are coming down all the way. So this is the first rib right here. First rib is about right here. So we have pellets all the way down to this level. Is that consistent or inconsistent with the shot being fired from his left, apparently going upward to right. the brain? That wouldn't be consistent. And the reason being is then it would have to, the pellets would have to go up, curve, and come down while the rest of them are continuing this way. Okay. So could I have this one next? Sure. Okay. Defense Exhibit 111. I can do Elmo. I can. I have it. Okay, this should be up on the screen now. Um, can you, we're talking about the lower right hand, I mean, our, the, the left side of the body. The left side of the, the body. The R stands for right, so the x ray is being taken like this, right side, and this is the left side. Okay, so could you blow up the lower R right corner, please? There you go. Now, what does this depict? So this is showing here on the left side of the jaw, um, and we see all of these pellets that are here. So the jaw is right here, and you can see these pellets are in the left side of the jaw, in the neck, and they're going down into the upper left chest. So, and you believe that the directionality on these is down? Well, from the totality of the evidence, I be believe, yes, they're downwards. Okay. And, um... But this x-ray has other findings, I think, that are important for that opinion. Okay. And, I mean, you can see the severity of the fractures the, of the skull. The skull should... Actually, I think it was better if we were back. The severity of uh, the skull should obviously come all the way around, right? Mm -hmm. There's no skull here. That's probably the area where the um, shotgun was pressed against the head. And we've got all of these fractures. In medical terms, we, we call it multiple comminuted fractures. Um, this is, I mean, textbook for a contact rain shotgun wound to the head, to the top of the head, not down. And, um, okay, so in your opinion, if it had happened the way Dr. Reamer said, um, you would not have the directionality of those pellets in the shoulder down, correct? Right. And you would not have um, that kind of devastation to the skull. It wouldn't be enough energy. That's correct. You may have some what we call linear fractures, so little lines of fractures but you wouldn't have the top of the skull completely gone. So explain to me, not being a hunter, how does the, 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 the gas, you've got gas coming first, pellets coming second, right? Yes, sir. So how do you get the gas going in and the pellets continuing on? Well, the, the pellets are projected by the, the, the gas causing pressure to push out the... Um, the, the shot and then the pellets within it. So, um, you know, think about a rocket that's going up into space, right? So you see all of the cloud underneath the rocket and the rocket will continue going up, but the cloud goes out because that's the area of least resistance. But the rocket will still continue. 
So that's pretty much the same, same mechanism. The, the, the shot cup is going to be pushed out. The energy from all of that gas needs to go somewhere. And when it's being pressed up against a firm surface like a skull, that pressure is going to build up. In, it's going to go through the hole that's caused by the entrance wound. And it's got nowhere else to go. So it is, and of course this is all happening in milliseconds, but the, all of that gas is expanding the inside of the skull. And the least resistance is right here at that opening now. So it's going to cause that area to basically pop out. And um, some of the pellets would go through, most of the pellets would go through? Oh, the pellets will continue through. There may be, the brain is not here, right? And so there's probably pellets within the brain, but I, we don't have an x-ray of the brain. They didn't x-ray the brain. Correct. So, and the skull, I mean, the brain would leave the cavity? Or in this case, did it leave the cavity? Yes, it did. And uh, under what kind of force? Uh, I, I can't give you an exact, you know, number. We, the forces are usually in what are called Newtons, but it's the, the buildup of that pressure in the skull, it, it's even in that textbook. It, brains being eviscerated uh, in, in shotgun cases are from contact wounds. So if you're the person uh, holding the gun to the skull, um, does any of that energy go up the barrel of the gun? Well, yes. Once that, like I said, it builds up in the head and then it comes back up. So that's what causes the brain to be pushed out. There's going to be pellets that will come out. There will be other bodily fluids that will come out and will go up along. Uh, it will basically be what we call back spatter or back motion. But in a violent way? Yes. And um, the person holding that gun, would they be subject to being covered in that material? Yes, they would. In a very forceful way? Yes. Okay, so um, let me show you a couple other pictures. That's this photo, right? That's that one. Yeah, okay. Would you put um, Defense Exhibit 113, please? This is an evidence. Okay. Um, tell us what that depicts. So now we've moved over to the side, to the left, more of the left shoulder, and showing some of the left arm. And again, you see how the pellets are sort of dispersed and they're coming down. Um, this is your shoulder blade, your scapula. And so it's even down to the level of the collarbone here and the shoulder blade. Is that, so, con is that consistent with a shot coming up and across the shoulder and into the neck, or is it consistent with something coming down? Well, again, with the totality of everything, this is absolutely going down. Okay. Um, now, let me see. 